In this video, continuing in our series on vitamin D, we're going to discuss the main hypothesis used to explain why human beings have such varying skin colors. But before we do, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already, like the video and comment on the video to help with the algorithm. Now let's get started. So friends, what I wanted to do for our second video on the vitamin D series is essentially introduce you to melanin and the hypothesis that explains why, partially why, human beings have such varying skin color around the world. These two concepts, well not so much the melanin, but the concept of the hypothesis, which we're about to discuss, will be very useful for you in future videos and will help to ground your understanding of the material we cover in its reasoning. And you'll be able to come up with mechanisms and causes for certain things occurring in future videos. Vitamin D levels vary widely among humans, partly because of environmental and genetic factors. Environmental factors mainly include the exposure of people to the sun, namely their latitude around the globe. Whereas genetic factors have two different pathways. One is a pathway regarding melanin, which we're going to discuss shortly. And another is melanin independent pathways that affect our ability to synthesize and maintain vitamin D levels in our body. There are reasons some people have higher vitamin D levels than others that has nothing to do with their skin color and nothing to do with where they live in the world. But today we're going to be talking specifically about skin color, about melanin, and about the reason we believe that human beings have such, well the main reason we believe human beings have such widely varying skin colors around the world. First, let's talk about melanin. Melanin is produced by cells called melanocytes in our skin. Melanin is the main reason that our skin colors differ widely, although it's not the only reason. Melanin acts for three purposes in the skin. Let's begin with the protection from UV damage. Melanin has a high refractive index of 1.7, about 1.7, meaning it can protect us from infrared, gamma, and UV rays. When we're exposed to UV radiation, melanin acts to attenuate the oxidative stress that occurs in our skin, meaning that melanin reduces the damage that UV rays do to our cells, which could be DNA damage, one of the ways that melanoma skin cancers develop. For those that don't know, radiation from the sun is DNA damaging to humans. It can damage your DNA in cells, causing the DNA to mutate and leading to potentially more cancers later in life. Melanin is an antioxidant in some contexts and attenuates the oxidative stress caused by radiation from the sun. But by the way, many people don't realize that melanin can also be pro-oxidant. In fact, melanin has a couple of varieties and there's several varieties of each of those. There's one called eumelanin, which is a darker version, like a brown to black. And there's faux melanin, which ranges between a blonde to red. Faux melanin is particularly prone to oxidative stress. And even eumelanin can be neutralized with our body's own antioxidant, glutathione. But melanin also does a couple of other things which are very useful. It protects our skin from penetration and inflammation by making the pH of our skin more acidic. It also protects the contents of our blood vessels, which means the nutrients that are circulating through our body from damage from the radiation from the sun, therefore protecting our vitamins from being damaged. And this protective effect leads us to the vitamin D folate hypothesis. This is a hypothesis explaining why human beings pigmented got darker and depigmented over time with two opposing motivations. One is to protect the contents of blood vessels from damage, protect our vitamins and nutrients, and the other is to get enough vitamin D from the sun. The reason for that is because in the skin, the cholesterol precursor to vitamin D competes with melanin for the effect of radiation from the sun, in the sense that the more melanin you have, the less of the cholesterol precursor can be converted into vitamin D. So, depigmenting may increase vitamin D levels aside from other genetic effects, just the depigmentation which is genetic. Whereas on the other hand, repigmenting may protect our nutrients. Now for those that don't know, folate is a B vitamin that has been found to be extremely important in early development. In fact, if a pregnant mother is insufficient in her folate status, her child will often be born with congenital defects that are so harmful that the child may not be able to reproduce him or herself. So this is a very strong pressure on human beings to protect their folate status, which made academic believe that this vitamin could be isolated by itself to explain the 
pressure to repigment or pigment further. Now, personally, I think that this hypothesis is overly simplified, but I also thought it was instructive for us to think about the role of melanin in our skin. We have many variants, genetic variants, that predispose us to darker or lighter skin through melanin and through non-melanin mechanisms. And we also have other variants that don't even affect the skin color that affect our vitamin D levels. Here we learned about what might be the reasons that melanin is so selected for across human beings. And we'll see in future videos that human beings have been selecting for pigmentation and depigmentation from before we were humans, including from when we first lost our body hair. And that may be the first time that we repigmented or pigmented further. Now, if this hypothesis is correct, we should see certain genetic variants get much more common as latitude increases due to the demands of synthesizing more vitamin D. This is broadly true, but not exactly true in all cases. For example, Native Americans present a problem for this theory. Anyway, we're going to continue in tomorrow's video discussing vitamin D. For now, all we have to remember is that preserving our vitamin status is one reason to be darker, and one reason to be lighter is to get more vitamin D, so that the melanin doesn't compete with the cholesterol precursor in the synthesis of vitamin D. Anyway, friends, I look forward to seeing you again this afternoon.